I must have been like one of those hateful cocky moods when somebody was trying to kind of you know convince me I will make a strong case for words only novel uh, and why should what is graphic novel and there's a deep suspicion in the art world as well as in the world of literature uh, about graphic novels. I believe that what graphic novel can create other forms can't um, because you need to kind of you know not just be literate as in which is usually used for words but you need to know how to read images. The trick to write good graphic novel is not to be a great clever writer neither to be a great brilliant artist and not to have the ego of being either a brilliant writer or a brilliant artist uh, but to be a brilliant reader. So the beginning uh, which was Corridor was years back when uh, it was fashionable to talk about the multi-plot and it was just kind of fresh out of Goldsmiths trying out multi-plot and things like that. Then came Barn Owl which is like sort of 18th century Calcutta, false history, mythology, fact put together, a lot of research, a lot of looking at dead people's files and objects, you know, like trying to learn history through objects of a certain era. Then came Harappa files, which are much more like sort of catalogued, uh, not non-research, um, catalogued, um, trying to kind of, you know, write short narrative. So, um, structure, to answer your question, also changes. In, in the first instance with Corridor, the structure was very primary. Mm -hmm. Being there, like being in the crowd, recording, pretty much what you're doing right now, recording um, uh, in a sort of a, in a secretive sort of way, trying to kind of understand dialogues and people how, mm -hmm. using the visual culture of the places that you weaving all that into uh, my main narrative to give a sort of sense of place and locale and things like that. Urbanism, which was quite fashionable mm -hmm. at that point of time, flannering and all mm -hmm. that. Thing. Some of us are local, you know. We are uh, naturally urbane and local. I don't think it's a particular skill, it's just a way to be. So if you place us in whether it's Edinburgh or Shanghai or uh, Buenos Aires or Calcutta, we would react in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would try to become as local as possible in the quickest possible time. Some of my books use that particular strategy. It exposes uh, somebody like me, who is also a very urban, a product of urbanity, a product of like sort of, you know, fast talking urban, like could be in Brooklyn, could be anywhere else in the world, who kind of looks at Calcutta and suddenly can totally see the rhythm and visuals. I mean, of course you hold on to visuals to kind of, you know, those are your link. Like when I was in Sao Paulo, and my strategies of like trying to understand Sao Paulo was the strategy maybe another person would employ in Calcutta. I just hung around with two detectives who were doing surveillance, trying to catch people um, committing adultery. It, it is universal, look, understanding the machismo of local or understanding locality. My biggest ability was like that Thomas Pynchon character, you know, uh, Slothrop in, in uh, Gravity's Rainbow. I just happened to be there. I was a great happen to be there person, you know. I, was, I seemed to be simultaneously being in, in events which were happening at the same time, but I was there. I would have been a perfect murderer because I mean I would have had an alibi for everything I did. I was always constantly hanging around, talking, and never tired of people. I still am not tired of people, all sorts of people. I write because of my intense socialization. I mean I've socialized with all sorts of people. Like a tiny guy in the larger scheme of things can actually reveal a lot. You know, Little Earth can talk a lot about like the cosmos because I feel like being a small uh, cog in that gigantic sort of scheme of things is often a very nice vantage point. I think the, the modesty of your position is fantastic and liberating. So it was just fantastic to you know, you know hear these stories and the people who take so much pride in their professions. Hustlers, I love hustlers. I mean, I'm being from this city, I'm one myself because I tried to float a company several times I and mean, I had all these companies and to, to start a company you have to be a hustler and I think I miss those days. I love corruption, can I be on record? I mean, I, corruption is great. Corrupted souls. Those disreputable men who I grew up with, the hustlers, the, 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 the shysters, the gas bags and the charismatic sort of seller of aphrodisiacs and has been replaced by this sort of very unsparing kind of Indians, you know, the sort of, you know, very uh, nothing will come in the way, like probably nothing will come in the way of progress, you know. So 
that chapter which I'm talking about is basically about that unsparing Indians where nothing can compromise their growth and their understanding of self and understanding of the nation. I, I don't know where this attitude has come from. Maybe for years of waiting outside visa offices, maybe years of immigration, standing in the line for immigration, maybe years of like sort of be feeling Indian, and everything cowered down by its poverty and all of which all are there still. But somehow they sort of, you know, it's replaced by this strong sense of national identity, strong uh, malevolence of like self. But the kind of India which I am very comfortable with is these hustlers, you know, day to day, you know, you know, trying to kind of sell you something which you don't need. I think I am the psychic plumber of of uh, of the current society. <laughs> no, psychic plumber is currently my entire work is based around the psychic plumber. This guy who understands uh, a certain kind of physics of uh, of how the world works and things like that. And, creates knowledge as he as he I mean for himself mm -hmm. fundamentally he breaks down the universe for himself and other people kind of you know either join up or not so psychic plumber is uh, <laughs> like from India going completely insane to India sort of staying uh, somewhat normal uh, the psychic plumber is the last man holding the fort regarding pace and, and, and structure suddenly that you're sort of stuck in one moment like inside a fish market and everything is happening all around you that's also the power of the medium that the simultaneity of many many things which you can't have in a durational uh, thing like such as films that you know everything sort of has to follow everything but out here you sort of have everything put together so that diagrammatic possibilities of what I do uh, which is words and text is enormous but the power of the medium suddenly the form comes into the I think the Harappa Files uh, inspiration comes from Babar Nama. Babar uh, was a fantastic writer. Um, and Akbar Nama, first thing Akbar he did when he was a child uh, was he, uh, he became the emperor of Hindustan at age 16 and he was unlettered. First thing he did was what every teenager would do, he commissioned a comic book called the Hamza Nama, text and images put together. So, you know, so Harappa comes from that sort of tradition of like text, you know, illuminated text. And I wanted to kind of get out of graphic novels because I was sort of thinking that I was like hitting a kind of some kind of a wall with graphic novels. I sort of thought that I'm kind of, I'm finishing as a story. I still have that feeling that I've finished as a graphic novel. I have less and less things to say in, uh, in sequence. So this came, the text and image where, where the, uh, the text completes the image or vice versa mm -hmm. the image completes the text sort of the thing and i think there's a lot more possibilities of design and, and composition mm -hmm. of how you com compose text and images text in its pure form mm -hmm. images in its pure form so the, most of this work is collected mm -hmm. so it kind of it's my first attempt to kind of you know actually sort of you know, expose uh, and bring in the the, the the storytelling aspect of Indian art and, and make it abstract enough to be to be seen again and again as a, as a piece of work. Now I just felt like, okay, I've now written this whole sentence and I, this very nice paragraph, when I'm talking about telephone sanitizer, about this man who used to eat uh, heaps of rice and when two of those people would sit across from each other, uh, uh, they would not know the identity of the other person till halfway through lunch when the rice would deplete halfway through. I wrote it and then I thought that I don't need to now draw it because it's kind of done unless I want to draw something else like the map of Midnapur where they come from. Or if I did a drawing, I did not want to write about it mm -hmm. sort of a thing. So it just, that also started happening. So I think it's a, it's a very natural formalistic movement. You know? uh, I also happen to know uh, uh, from Bani who's uh, Muslim, uh, getting to know a little more about like Islamic culture and they have something called the under Nile. Under Nile is very interesting. It's beneath the Nile. There is another river, and and everything is lopsided there. So it's like you're in a world which is complete does not follow physical laws. I was trying to figure out if there's an Under Nile which connects these stories, and you might not get it the first time, you might not get it the second time, but the third time you suddenly see that everything is so bloody connected. Mm -hmm. that it's all obscene. Um, that it's all, it is all the same fabric, you pull one story, you pull all the rest with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you sort of, you know, submerge the story, everything else goes down. Our, our neighborhoods in South, in the one which I live in also, and uh, uh, most of South Delhi, our neighborhoods are uh, Barbicans, you know. We are, we live in uh, fortresses. 
it's not about uh, it's not a, so much a question of uh, uh, security because security is given it's a paranoid society so they're all like secure or something it's entitlement these are gates of entitlement i mean the jokes about how our neighbor is going to soon like in about five years or so we'll have their own nuclear power plant <laughs> because they want to be like self-sufficient so yeah you know it's these are uh, these uh, gates are, are fundamentally uh, an extremely important marker of our society i just feel that my books are um, in a sense uh, constantly questioning these sort of received idea that uh, the middle class is constantly telling each other that you know there this is this it's the sanguine is the yeah there's a word called sanguine right it's the sanguine indian middle class the self loving uh, self sort of defining secular uh, calling themselves secular idea of um, construct about themselves and i i am the spoil sport and i'm just a uh, spoil a uh, gentle spoil sport mm-hmm. i love it all i mean i created these monsters who are i mean i know very lovable people they're all built around basic stereotypes that are that are coming up that are thrown into our lives because of this sort of changes in uh, in the society like the real estate agent i mean you can't you can make me monster they're all crooked and monstery but uh, they also like at the same time fight and they use charm uh, they brave uh, indifference a german shepherd dog sometimes the auto guys three wheeler guys you see them they're completely unloved and uh, you know so it's very easy to be very sort of angry and uh, you know like go to the passport office and you see these middle class bloody idiots uh, fuckers who like stand there and immediately like a like a walking talking stereotype this middle middle class man standing before me well turned out probably works in a uh, multinational company he said oh they should just privatize this place in 3 in 3 months it will be like just you know we don't have to wait here within 30 seconds i had my passport in my hand right mm-hmm. it works the system works obviously and it's just like this these guys these idiots who think that you know let's privatize everything i mean we are not privatized people we grew up with a with a with a certain degree of sort of state uh, Uh, public whatever public institutions this generation doesn't have any interest in public institutions even our bloody game cricket is a is a private affair it's like the most horrid game in the world right now yeah once upon a time fantastic but now the most horrid game because of privatization privatism the bane of india this whole india bloody shiny I and mean, everything i say is with a with, with the deepest of affection it's not like jadedness uh, I mean, I would find great disservice to actually blindly love a country. I think it's that's all these sort of new patriots that are coming up. Uh, oh, I can't hear this thing being said about my country. Those are the real uh, uh, monsters because I think uh, anybody who likes um, something will be will be in a position to so criticize. What is the draconian form? Oh, I wish I could tell you, but I'm not at the liberty to tell you because I mean, being commissioned by, you know, it will be a act of betrayal, and as you know, I'm incorruptible. <laughs>